you're aware in this worship service, it doesn't go on forever. In fact, later it talks about there's a break. They take a break for a half hour. But you're aware of at least of some of the things that are happening on the earth. Hebrews 11 and 12 talk about we're living this life before a great cloud of witnesses. But notice verses uh, 9 and 10 of chapter 6. When he opened the angel, opened the fifth seal, I saw under the altar the souls of those who'd been slain, martyred because of the word of God and the testimony they maintained. And they called out in a loud voice, how long, sovereign Lord, holy and true, until the, you judge the inhabitants of the earth and avenge their blood? Then each of them was given a white robe, and they were told, wait a little while until the number of their fellow servants and brothers who were to be killed as they would had been completed. Three things you might notice. Number one, the souls under the altar. The word soul, we get our word psychology. The word is, in Greek is psyche. It, it, can, it means the immaterial part of us, but also it often refers to a whole person. You know, how many souls were saved or lost or... Um, and so, whatever the real you is, the real you is there. Notice, second, that they're clothed with a white robe. So, they're not disembodied spirits somehow. There's a covering and a robe. And then notice, they're, they're, they know something because they're looking down on earth and saying, how long is this going to go on, the injustice and the evil, the Idi means, the people that are doing this to kids? How long, all this evil things that are terrible, how long, O oh Lord, is this going to happen? The only way you can ask how long is if there's some awareness of what's happening on the earth. Now, we don't know how much, but we know to some degree that there's some things happening. You know, it's very interesting. Um, we really do care about who knows what we do. Isn't it true? I mean, our behavior really is when certain people are watching us, we behave in certain ways. And when other people are watching us or we don't think anybody's watching, we behave in certain ways. And, and intellectually, it's really interesting. I mean, I'm, I'm with you on this, is that we all know that God is watching all the time, knows the secrets and motives of our heart. But somehow we sort of put that aside and, and sort of forget that happens. I remember as a, um, a young man in high school, uh, my sister was one of the most amazing people I'd ever met. I did not know at the time that she was a Christian. She had a friend, and she'd become a Christian like her sophomore year. All I knew was when I came home, she had an interest in my life. We took some classes together. She was only about a year and four months older, but she was like my hero. She was the nicest, kindest person. And, and I mean, just she, you ever have someone who thinks way more of you than you know is true, and you unconsciously find yourself trying to live up to it? And I can tell you, multiple times in high school, I'd be at a party, and there'd be some dope, and I would think, it wasn't even like, what would my parents think? It wasn't even like, you know, am I going to mess up my body for the basketball team? It was, I had this picture of, oh, I just could see my sister Punky's eyes going, oh, Chip, I can't believe you would ever do that. Have you ever had that experience? Do, do you realize that it well may be that your mom that is in heaven, or your dad that's heaven, or a brother or a sister, they may be aware of this great cloud of witnesses. It really has some impact, maybe if we thought a bit more. Instead of heaven as some ethereal, floating around, people playing on electric harps, what if some people that really mattered were aware of at least some of the things that were happening? I wonder how that would impact how we lived. 